What's one, two, or you want to do? Uh, I don't know. You go ahead and start, and I'll jump in. <laughs> uh, this is the Empower MPFC30, a uh, plural component uh, pump. Um, eats and pushes material down a hose to a spray gun. Uh, we use speed control motors. You got A and B side. Uh, each motor can be speed controlled to equalize your flow rates. Uh, material comes out here, goes down to the spray gun, and returns. We do a full system recirculation. Um, recirculation keeps the. Oh, she's really low. She zoomed into the gun. Recirculation keeps uh, the whole system at a very stable, steady temperature. Um, temperature controllers are right here. Main power switches, we are not plugged in right now. Right here. You have one switch for the heater and one switch to turn on the function of the motors. Um, we have a fluid heating system that uh, takes the material, we have pumps that pull the material from your. Uh, barrels or buckets or whatever you've got them in. And uh, so it brings it up through the machine, runs it through a heat exchanger. Uh, the heating system is liquid. It goes all the way down the hose uh, right to here and then back down again. So we have a constant steady temperature. Uh, the material, when you're not, you know, whenever you're not spraying, you're in, like you said, full recirculation mode. So it's coming through here, here, back down through the hose, back into your uh, containers. So everything comes up to a nice, steady temperature. The gun is also um, uh, acetone clean and air injection. So the, uh, when you're spraying, you take your control and you run it to spray mode. So now instead of going back here, the liquids are coming through and, and meeting at the tip of the gun. But you also have another control here. which is uh, over on this, this side, which uh, brings the air into the system. Air comes through, splits, and is injected into the fluid streams on, on both sides. So it really makes the, uh, the liquid very turbulent. And then as, it, as they come together in the tip, uh, it gets sprayed out uh, under uh, air pressure and everything is mixed really well. So then when you stop spraying, you put it back to here, which goes back into recirc mode. You take your little lever, you bring it to stop, you give it a quick little blast of acetone, which gives you a short blast of acetone, goes right up against the, the balls, the ball valves, and flushes everything really well. You go back to air, and it ejects all the material, cleaning the gun uh, so that you can put it down, walk away, not worry about it uh, clogging up on you. A couple of uh, system specs, we'll say. Uh, the MPFC 30 is a 30 amp machine. It requires a 220, 240 volt um, power supply. Uh, the heater in it is 3,800 watts. It uses about half of the total power draw. The motors are the other half. Um, the pumps will do about a gallon per minute per side, so you can get a total flow of two gallons per minute depending on viscosity, and that is measured as all specs are at the hose connections. Uh, flow rates out of, the, out of the gun will be completely different, and Greco does the same thing. <laughs> um, the acetone purge that Tom was talking about is internal. There is a pressurized uh, solvent purge tank in the machine, so you just fill it up and you're ready to go. Uh, it uses the same air supply uh, for pressurization that is used to pressurize the gun and, and uh, mix your material in the gun. So it's one air connection in the back of the machine. Um, what about the what uh, spray foam specs? Is different as far as the power, watt, power requirements? Yeah, so this is the MPFC30. This machine is intended for foam and or uh, polyurea materials. Um, basically anything else you want to put through it. <laughs> We have, this is a higher end uh, machine, we have one model lower, the MPF20, which is intended only for foam. It has a 1500 watt heater and uses two 110, 120 volt, 15 amp circuits. So you can go into any house that has electricity and spray foam. 
Um, that one has, I think I already said, a 1500 watt heater, and the gallon per minute spec is the same. Uh, the machine itself is on a cart, uh, casters in the front, large wheels in the back. It enables you to uh, bring it up, you can bump it up and down stairs inside of the house, uh, make it really easy to move around. The hose would wrap right here, it's no wider uh, than a 30 inch door, so you could wheel it through any 30 inch door in a home. And it'll fit through doors smaller than that, fit through that. a 28 door or a 26 door. Yeah. Uh, what you're hearing rattling in there, we have a storage bin under this cover. Uh, you can keep extra parts. We have plug sets for both the dip tubes and the hose in case you want to swap dip, you know, materials. You can plug up your hose and store it and come back. Um, so this gives you a nice little place to uh, put some, some tools and some spray tips and whatever else you need. Um, here is our liquid heating system. Can you see this? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> These two are our liquid heating system. Works just like an automobile, just like a car. Uh, pressurized radiator cap, so this keeps the heating system at about 14 PSI. And anything that exceeds that will blow off into this over overflow tank, which should have about an inch in the bottom of it uh, when the system is cold. This is the acetone fill. Uh, solvent fill. So if you're going to fill this up, this is a half gallon capacity. You would open the valve here and fill it up. There is a sight gauge on the back. So you fill till the arrow and that's completely full. This has a safety interlock feature in which since this uses the same air pressure supply as the gun, when you plug in air and energize the system, we have a little lockout bracket here that physically stops you from opening the acetone fill. Uh, the concern here was that uh, somebody doesn't realize they have air pressure in the system and they open the acetone fill and get a face full of acetone. And nobody wants that. So the I can release system the still, air here. Okay. So, the system, oops. Yeah. so the system is still pressurized and you still cannot open the acetone, like you physically just can't do it. And when you release air pressure, come back over here. Yeah. You can see that the lockout bracket has returned. We'll do that one more time just for yeah. the uh, okay. so you get that side also. <laughs> so air pressure in, and then stay, stay there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So now you can open the acetone without getting a blast, blast solvent. Uh, what else? We'll go to the back of the machine. This is your A marked with red, B marked with blue. Uh, material inputs, this, these go directly into the pumps and this is where you're pulling from. Uh, and these are returns out to, uh, for the circulation. This model is a 220 or 240 volt system, so it has a nice big beefy cord coming out of it. The connection on this is an L14-30 NEMA connector. Uh, there are adapters available for dryer plugs and the like. Uh, you just have to keep the four wires. You have to keep the neutral. Um, the, the system splits to two 120 circuits inside. Uh, for, for the motors, and so you can't have a neutral less connection. So these um, are yeah, you know the, the dip tubes, and what's really great about this, that's different than a lot of machines, is you can just put this right down into your 55 gallon drum, and the system has enough pulling power to pull the material out of the drum so you don't need transfer pumps. Uh, it's a big, big deal in the spray foam industry, and just another one less thing that could go bad for you is uh, no transfer pumps. Um, this is set up for recirculating because when you park a machine and it has uh, your ISO, ISO as everybody knows is the enemy because it, it just wants to crystallize and harden up and cause all kinds of trouble. So what we do is uh, we have a uh, system here that allows you to, without, so when you put the system away, you've, you've got your tubes parked here and you're no, no longer involved with your storage tanks, um, you can recirculate the system just by uh, turning on your uh, motor 
turning on the uh, control for the uh, A side, and now your liquid will go through, so heat the system up, you'll get all your A up to temperature, which will eliminate any crystallization that may have occurred. You do that once a week, and the machine is good, and you'll never have a crystallization problem. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Let me demonstrate how these disconnect. So when you're turned off, clean out right here, clean out this, and the whole system stays, stays sealed. Additionally, this would be put back into your, in your drum material. You take that off, clean it out, and you're sealed right there. And also these connections are reversed, so you can never hook up to the wrong dip tube and cross your streams and have a foam being manufactured in your hoses, which is a bad thing. Uh, same, same for here, your, your, dip, your dip tubes are going to be having a little dribble all the time, so they're going to catch in these little uh, containers here, which have uh, screw caps here, so you can periodically remove those and, and drain these out. The whole machine, when filled with heating fluid and material, weighs about 240 pounds without the hose. Uh, a 50 foot hose is an additional, with the gun assembly, roughly 60 pounds. 100 foot is, uh, if I remember correctly, 80, 80 pounds without the gun, so we'll say 90, 95 pounds uh, with the gun. Um, much lighter than a lot of higher pressure systems. We should mention pressure. Uh, this is a, a medium pressure machine. Uh, it's capped at 400 PSI. Uh, it's internally regulated, so each uh, pump will shut off if it reaches 400 PSI. And the whole, um, that, that system that has been shut off will need to reduce to 300 PSI in order to uh, turn back on, so you don't get a lot of pressure surging. It also can carry its full weight on the handlebars. And these handlebars are easily removable if you need to get it into a tighter space. There's three bolts on each side and you're done. But the full weight can be carried here. So uh, something that we'll do quite often is put a forklift right underneath here and just pick it right up. As far as leaving material in the hose, it's good where it's stopped for right before the gun, correct? Comes right, right up to... Yeah. Right here in the valves. Right the material will be in here and in here. Yep. Um, and so that's why the these connections close. Right. How um, long do we leave the material mat like so in the line? Foam is very reactive. We recommend a week. We have done a month without much issue. If you go beyond that, depending on your environment, there's a lot of moisture in the air, you can end up with some sludging that's, that's pretty hard to get rid of. Yeah. If you let it sit for several months, you will end up needing a different mode. So you, you want to constantly every keep um, cleaning it out. The, the A side here can be recirculated without hooking up to a bucket of material. So if you picture this, this would be pulling from, from a bucket. Let's say your valve is open, so you're pulling in. This is coming back from the, from the machine as recirculate. And it can be directed here back into your bucket or drum. Or it can be well, actually this way. The valve in this position is directed that way. Mm -hmm. So this is full operation. Yep. And so if you're not connected, in this this is looped this way. So you can flip on the machine and run your A motor and circulate and heat just the A side. And that will with foam it'll sort of freshen it up. Mm. And we recommend doing that once a week with foam. That Other materials are less reactive with moisture, and so they will last longer. Unfortunately, we don't know all the materials you're going to put through it, so we can't specify, you know. That's... Nothing on this machine is really expensive. So I don't know what a Graco heater costs, but I can imagine it's four figures at least. One of the challenges we're trying to solve with, with this, and for the camera purposes, we have two contractors that are buying pumps, and so they're here, and we're going through training. But one of the challenges we're trying to solve is some of the suppliers, not to mention any names, 
uh, like to have O-rings or replacement parts that are custom to their machines, yeah. and then you're basically you know, beholden to them yeah. again and again. I remember I paid, I think it was $150 for, I think it was 10 or 12 O-rings one time. It's just you know, crazy. So, from the very birth of the machine design, we've been designing it so it had commonly available parts. That we want to try to purposely minimize the things that you have to get from us. And, and you can go down to the you know, hardware store and get all ring because it's a standard all ring. Mm -hmm. And so everything is, is uh, SAE or metric standard uh, for all rings and for all the fittings. You can see the fittings are, are pretty common fittings. So there are very few things that you'd have to come back and, and get from us. Yeah, it's all basically standard half inch or, or three eighths inch compression fittings. Uh, three eighths and a quarter inch push to fit here. Should readily available almost anywhere. Um, and everything else is basically pipe thread, uh, NBTE pipe thread. We saw that not only the domestic market, but the international markets also. You know, if you're in an international market, you don't have access mm -hmm. to even common hardware or, you know, unique, uh, having to, to get a custom part from something in the U.S. Right. And you're in the middle of a job, you're done, right. you know? And your customer's not going to wait. So, for the two week shipping. Yeah, for the two weeks or three week shipping, exactly. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Almost any kind of problem that you would run into on a job site, say um, your hose is pretty old and you scraped it against something sharp, almost any kind of problem that you're going to run into on a job site can be fixed with very basic tools. Um, a couple adjustable wrenches, some standard size sockets, uh, there's really not much else other than that. If you have a more advanced problem, say an electrical issue that's um, inside here, you would want somebody working on it that knows what they're doing, and generally that's not a field repair. Now, with the power, is it on cert? How is that? Is there a panel? Is there a bus panel? Or is there a, just like an amp? Like just a breaker? Or how, how is oh, that? breakers. So, um, on this machine, this is a 240 volt, and the yeah, go close to this one. yeah, we need to spin around again. So, you want to see the panel underneath? It's not very bright in there. I'm trying a flashlight. You see that good? Yeah. Right here. So right in here. I just think I need to go up here. There you go. That's probably better. This is tight spacing, but. You shouldn't really ever need to, to actually touch these things. So the heater breaker is right there. That's a 20 amp mm -hmm. breaker. Can you point that again? This guy is the breaker for the heater. And then these ones, a little easier to reach, these are your A and B pump uh, breakers. So if a pump is overheating or a pump is drawing too much, um, one of these will pop and push out, and when it cools down, you can just push it in to reset it. Um, if it pops again, then there's some other kind of issue. Um, and that's on the MPFC 30, on the MPF yep. 20. On the MPF 20, the two sevens here, and then the 20, this 20 turns into, what was it? A 10, I think. Yep. And it's one of these push button uh, reset ones. The same so, location. So same location. Regardless and of what model they have. So these, these switches are motor reversing switches, uh, pump reversing switches. This is uh, becoming standard on all the machines. This is something that nobody else in the market that I am aware of or right. Tom is aware of right. does. This allows you, <laughs> if you're swapping hoses or you're flushing the machine, to actually recapture uh, a lot of the material that's in the machine. So you can flip your switch up. Um, so it's just like it's labeled right, here. Right, I'm up is reverse. Back and it will retract the, yeah. the right back into your barrel. Right back into your reverse file. the pump. Yeah, exactly. it'll reverse the pump. Yeah. The pumps are <laughs> bidirectional. That's they don't awesome. care. Um, one thing that's very important, and it's marked right here, you need to make sure you turn off the motors before you reverse them. If you take one of these switches, there is an off position in the middle, but it's kind of hard to hit that. So if you take one of these and do that, you're going to be reversing the voltage to the motor instantly and could damage it. The motors in here are pretty stout. I have seen several of these motors 
a decade or more old that still run fine. Uh, but if you do something like that too many times, you're bound to to just start it. Yeah. have problems. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you want to do ratio tip? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So the uh, so when you're getting ready to spray and you've got your system is all up to temperature. Um, First thing you're going to do is uh, on the panel here. You're going to be dialing in speed of the motor. It really controls the rate of the flow, um, depending on uh, the viscosity of your materials and uh, your ability as a sprayer can vary tremendously. You know how high you're going to be running the motors. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll start. Typically, once you've got everything up to temperature and it's been recirculating for quite a while, and temperatures have been temperatures are where you want it to be, about 100 degrees for spray foam. Uh, leave both here. leave here. Leave uh, both the settings at uh, approximately like a three. You know, keep them the same. Um, you're going to put on your ratio tip. Tom, is there any certain time to let it, like to let it recirculate, just as like a guideline? It's, just to, it depends just a lot on the ambient temperature and yeah. yeah, whatever whatever it happens to be. The colder yeah. it is, the longer it takes. Yeah. All right. So um, put on the label on the back, uh, we have uh, reach operating temperature, reach full temperature for whatever your material is, and let yeah. it run for an additional twenty minutes after that. Yeah. Uh, but that is going to vary on your material. Yeah. And um, I don't have it right here, but normally I would cover everything with a uh, white lithium grease because uh, that really will help a lot with uh, preventing ISO uh, from uh, you know, white lithium grease. You can have it in a spray can or you can get a tub and, and just smear it on. So then you put on your ratio tip, which is actually splitting the seams, the streams rather. And uh, so we put that on. I should do this with my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> There we go, and then your nut, and then you take uh, take your cups on the ground. You can be definitely doing this with uh, proper uh, eye protection uh, because you could get it uh, to spray back in your face, which would be a bad thing. Uh, take the uh, splitter, go into the two cups, and take it, and you go, and then you just watch the uh, liquid come up, and you stop, and then you compare your Compare your levels. If they're level, then you know you're right on. If not, then whichever one is low, you speed it up a little bit. And, so, and you do that a couple times so you get uh, a perfect one-to-one -one ratio for spray foam. Uh, but with infinitely variable, we can spray any product at whatever ratio the, uh, the chemical requires. When, okay, once you've got that dialed in, then you're going to flush it out with your, uh, your acetone, clean it out. Um, Take this tip off. And the tip is reusable. And totally reusable. You put it on your spray tip, which is a very simple piece of plastic, it's like $2. Uh, so the, and the only time you ever really need to replace this is if you drop it and break it, because it's, it's going to clean out with your acetone flush system. Put that on the gun. I mean, that, that like, five, ten years ago, could have been a thousand dollar mistake, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, then yes. you're buying a new gun. And it's important to note that the gun that Tom is holding is a foam only gun. We have two different gun assemblies. Uh, the foam only is what you see there. The material, the polyurea gun, has an additional uh, air feed that feeds air to an attachment to the tip to help you atomize and get a good spray pattern. So with the foam, I see that you don't have any elements in the static mixer. Right. No elements, just a simple... And that's because system. your turbulence that's being caused by your air infusion. Right. The air injection into the streams right. through your little tubes here is sufficient to uh, have a very active mixing of the two products in that short amount of space. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then you switch to air. So now you're blasting your air through, and you're ready to spray, and you're spraying away. When you're done spraying, you back to off. Give it a quick little blast of acetone, which blasts everything out. Back to air, cleans out the acetone and the liquid. Maybe one more time, and then you're and you're ready to set it down. 
and you're clean and you're ready for storage. Do you not open this seconds. back up after you blast just to shoot like maybe whatever junk that's in there? No, that's what that's what your that's, that's, that's what, what that does. That's so what you your, don't have to reopen that. Correct. Right. Yeah. And your acetone are doing yeah. flushing everything out. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. once you're in this, well, if you do that again, then you've you got to reflush. Right. Yeah. Because again, the, uh, the and the main key here that our, our kind of our our little innovation is the, the way we've aimed the uh, acetone and the airstream against the flow, which creates extra turbulence, but also blasts the acetone directly at the ball face. This is a three-way ball valve. So not having that ball cl totally clean will cause the ISO to, uh, well, ISO will harden up, just like Gorilla Glue. And uh, so this, this keeps it nice and clean and you won't have the problem. So the innovation that you have in this gun, uh, where the solid flush is going directly, being direct, directed, to the face of the ball valve eliminates most of the problems that people have with gun setting up and seizing because the ball valve that gets seized right. because the surface material sits on there and reacts, right? right? Uh, so, so I would mention there are several patents that have been filed on, on what you have seen on this video and it is uh, unique innovations that, that Tom's talking about. The heart's desire of the designers were to make a, a pump that were designed with the contractor in mind and not the manufacturer in mind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> One more and thing. All the contractors oh, of note. Yeah, let's get it. Show show these. One more thing of note, uh, since you were focused in er here earlier, you may have noticed that there is about a hundred psi in A and B right now, um, just residual. This is one of our, uh, since this machine is brand new, this is one of our uh, checks, manufacturing checks. There's a lot of noise out there. Yeah. <laughs> so all the systems in the machine are checked and known to be working before shipping. And so this pressure was put in here. This is air pressure in here. This pressure has been holding in here for over 14 hours now. Um, and just shows to us that there's no leaks in the entire system and that it's ready to go. Uh, it's one of the many checks that we do on manufacturing to make sure that everything's up to uh, up to snuff. And that way you don't have to ship things with material in the hoses and things. You don't have yes. To, yeah, uh, the air. On shipping, um, the system will either be empty or it will have residual hydraulic fluid in it, which is a fluid that we choose to flush uh, the system out with. If you need to flush the system, you can use a low viscosity hydraulic fluid. Um, so we do not put A or B in a, in a pump and then ship it unless that customer has been here for training. Uh, for instance, today we have a customer here. We are going to use this machine today and then he's going to get it shipped out at a later date. And so this will have uh, A and or B in it. <laughs> so thank you. Any questions for uh, you know, when we have time? Uh, the builders and designers here will answer questions and um, yeah send your emails in contact us with phone whatever yep thank you